thanks for joining me, and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Dave. I'm happy to be here. Well, um, uh, how are things with you? Um, you've got a, a lot going on these days. A lot yes, of plates I spinning. do. Um, <laughs> things are great, though. I'm really excited. Um, you know, the last time I was on your show, I was running for office, and since then, I've been elected, and it's just yeah. been such an honor and a privilege to serve the citizens of Keene in the New Hampshire State House. Yeah, and that was such good news for, for a bunch of people who actually were on, uh, that was on Laurie's show last time, um, yes. Raise Your Voice. She was doing political commentary sort of things. So Lucius was on there. Jay Khan was on her show, you yep. know, all people who ended up uh, with seats and, you know, <laughs> and that kind of thing. So, yeah, congratulations on that. And, um, you know, I think I did have some questions for you. Uh, really, some of my simple questions uh, were, were where we thought we might start is just what's it been like to be a new rep in the State House? And, and walk me through a little bit. Sure. Of that. Well, first, I just want to thank you, Dave, so much for having me again on today and just say how much I respect your work and the work of Cheshire TV. Thank I think you. it's you provide such a service to our community. Every community event that I go to, um, you're there covering it, and it's really wonderful um, to have local events and politicians and stories covered. So thank you so much for your work. Oh, my pleasure. And um, in terms of my work, I think I'll start by just for people who I'm new to, just telling them a little bit about myself and why I ran, and then I'll hop right into answering your question about um, being a freshman rep. So because freshman, that's correct, yeah. that's yeah. what I am. So I, um, as many people know, but for those of you who I'm new to, um, decided to run for office. Um, for um, a few reasons. One is that like, I have been somebody who throughout my life has struggled for bodily autonomy. When I was a teenager, I needed to access an abortion. Um, and I did face some abortion access barriers. But compared to many, I was privileged um, in that I had the um, I could afford um, an abortion, and I was able to get that, and that allowed me to go to college and to graduate school and to today be teaching yoga, um, have a nice. little boy. I had him when I was ready to have him and own a small business and be a state rep, and none of that would have um, happened if I was forced to carry through a pregnancy when I wasn't ready to. And later on in my life, I had I um, left an abusive relationship. And mm -hmm. again, like another very challenging situation, but I had um, the su support and resources that many don't have. Um, and so I felt after, once I was on the other side of that, seeing everything that was happening um, in the country um, and in the state with attacks on reproductive freedom and mm -hmm. survivors not having the resources that they need. I felt a need to pay it forward, and I wanted to go to bat um, for those who are still suffering, but maybe they don't have the privilege that I had. Maybe they can't speak English or they don't have um, parents um, who can help them financially afford a lawyer um, mm -hmm. in order to leave. And so I wanted to run for office to highlight those issues, which so many people face, those bodily autonomy issues, um, and bring them to the forefront in addition to being a consistent progressive voice um, and vote in the New Hampshire House. and. That's what I've been doing um, every been day doing. since yeah. I've gotten elected. And yeah. I, um, again, am just so grateful to the citizens of Keene for voting for me and being a freshman rep. It's been a wild ride um, because when I ran for office, I anticipated that Democrats would be in the majority in the legislature. Mm, I um, think we all thought we were going to get a lot <laughs> a lot better outcome than we did in uh, November. Yep. It's and so um it's been incredibly sad um to see what the Republicans have been doing um, now that they have a Republican trifecta. Oh. Um, they are, we have a Republican governor. We have a Republican majority on the executive council. And both the state Senate and the state House have Republican majorities. And 
Mm -hmm. while I wasn't anticipate and so that as a, as a freshman rep is it disheartening to see that You're working in that environment yeah I, I not what we expected not what you expected you expected probably a little uh, I don't know a little more even footing there and all the priorities I mean the, the things that they're putting down and bringing forward it just makes no sense it really it seems like opportunism they're, they're like we might as well do this basically rotten stuff while we can, and the things that, that New Hampshire families need uh, really are getting pushed aside right now. That's what it looks like It's incredibly, you're exactly right, Dave. Um, they are extremely reactionary. They are out of touch with the values of most Granite Staters, mm. and on both social issues and economic issues, they are pushing forward public policy that does not benefit the citizens of New Hampshire. Uh, how that being said, um, I am, I we do have. I have one of the things that's been very important to me um, since getting elected is to form relationships with like-minded colleagues and to continue, despite um, the circumstances, to be a strong voice for opposing bad policy and planting seeds for the future for what we want. And by holding mm, Republicans yeah. accountable now and making the public aware of what they are doing and what we would rather see in the future, uh, I'm hoping that working together, we can change the situation in the next election cycle and in the interim and, and and right now be working on building political power um, yep. holding off the bad stuff to the best of our ability and planting seeds for a better future yeah that is so so important the the planting seeds part um, of, of course like we need our youth it's their world and their future uh, as much as it is ours uh, perhaps even more so, they're going to live a longer time in whatever we create for them now. Um, that's really important stuff. And, uh, you know, that, that's really why I do what I do is to help kind of spread that message. And to your other point of um, just kind of keeping the lights on and um, making people aware of what's going on, because even I, you know, I, I think I'm pretty tuned in, but I'm not terribly, you know, I, I keep my finger on the pulse here and there, but... What happens at the State House is this great mystery, and if you're not really looking for it, you don't see it. That doesn't come on the evening news. You know, you don't see the legislation, you don't see the bills, uh, unless you've, you've got some line on, on it or know somebody, or, or see somebody clanging, clanging at the bars or carrying their signs downtown. Um, and that's a really big part of why I do what I do, is because the people are speaking the networks are controlled by, you know, the, the corporations. There's a very few corporations who control basically all the news that we see. And for whatever little part I'm able to do, I want to shine the light on what's going on in the world. And I want to show what the people are interested in and talking in, uh, talking about. Um, and I usually, uh, you have to take this time to talk to the <laughs> folks at home to say, you know, when I'm out in the street doing my thing, that, that's my own time. I'm a member at Cheshire TV. I have my own show. I, I do my own thing. My politics lean uh, to Democrat and progressive. Um, I should have said that the other way around. Progressive <laughs> and a little, little slice of Democrats in there. Um, so, so that's my own thing. Um, this channel, Cheshire TV, is all about anybody saying what they want and anybody bringing their stuff forward. But I bump into you because we are aligned in that yes, way. Yes, we and, are. <laughs> and quite honestly, um, these are the people who are in the streets. The, what the people are saying, what the people are demanding action for, uh, are the things that, that you're supporting and the things that we believe are, are true. Uh, it's not like every other Saturday I have a chance to go down and shoot the Republicans in the square saying, you know, we want more kids in cages and, you know, to keep your wages low. Like, those people don't come out and rally in the streets. Uh, it's not a great message to wear when you have to, you know, on TV and show your face and say that sort of thing. So that really does seem to be what the people are, are doing. Um, and I'm so grateful to run, that you are covering these um, important yes. progressive social movement events on your own. Um, it's it's incredibly important that people are well informed about the different things going on in their community and the public mm -hmm. policy that's going to impact their lives. I identify as a progressive Democrat. I'm both involved in progressive social movements and I'm a Democratic politician, but I'm definitely, I 
have been an activist for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I, um, so, and I would love, it's, we, we want more activists involved in electoral politics. We shouldn't see these things as separate. They go together. We need both. We need protests. We need people in the streets. And yep. we need to elect um, people who are going to put forth legislation that benefits the people and not, as you said, corporations um, and or a, a minority of religious fundamentalists who are trying to control what people yeah, do yeah. in their personal lives with their bodies or who they marry. Yeah. Like we need good politicians who are um, carrying out the will of the people and that have social movement backing and have good relationships so they can work together to put forth um, legislation that's going to aid progressive social change. So there's no need to choose. Um, we need to be involved both in the social movements and in electoral politics. And it's been a really important part of my work um, to try and help bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. And so um, we are working together. Um, and that's, that's uh, a, a great point about the, um, the, the politicians and then the votes and the things going through the state house um, don't necessarily represent what the people want. There's a different way to say, I think, what we just uh, talked about a little bit. Um, but the corporations and the special interests are very much represented uh, in, in those bodies. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's, there's the mainstream stream Democrat issue, as I see it. Um, they're a little too aligned with the status quo and the, the money in politics and all that sort of stuff. Um, and at the same time, we, we need the Democrats, and I think they need us as, as progressives, and we really are more together and on the same team than we are different. Um, but it's just it's an interesting process that we have, the two-party system and all the money in it. I, I, some of my friends are very involved in getting the money out of politics. I happen to think that's one of our most critical issues is, is mm -hmm. people doing this stuff for the corporations who continue. I mean, they're, they're, the fundraising becomes most of what they do once they get into office is start raising money to keep their seat, and that, that's just wrong. Um, but I, I do have a funny story to relate. Uh, along those lines, I went to um, mm -hmm. Concord to be a representative, a Democratic uh, rep, when, they, when, all the, when the big primary thing was going on and all the primary candidates went to the, to the State House. Yeah. Uh, not to the State House, but uh, where was that in, in Concord? Um, I might even be thinking Manchester. It was, the, it was the big one, the big rally. And they start coming through the, um, the, through the stands with signs for the candidates. You know, so you could, we were down front on the floor and the cameras were all there. Everybody was there. You know, 17 candidates or something. And as they were coming through, the first people through were ca carrying Biden signs. And I thought to myself, you know, I, they, they were take one and pass one down. And I said, oh, no, 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 thank you. Pass, I'll pass on the Joe Biden there. I was very much a Bernie guy. I was very much a lefty yeah. sitting in the Dem section. But I, it, it took me a while before I realized that my purpose there was actually to take all the signs and cheer like mad when that was going on. <laughs> But Joe was not my first choice. Uh, in, he was very much aligned with centrist democratic uh, policy. We didn't uh, have much hope for him uh, as a progressive at that point. He was just dead last on my list of guys. Um, and I couldn't be happier right now with uh, Joe and what he's managed to get done. I mean, you look at how hamstrung you can be getting put into that position. You look at what they did to Barack Obama and just said, we're going to say no to everything he does. Um, so, you know, I did not have uh, great expectations or optimism, and I'm really happy with what Joe is doing. I'm happy that he's getting enough Democratic support to make that a thing. Um, and right now, we, we live and work within the two-party system, and we're, we have, I think we have a lot of good friends in, um, in the Democratic Party for, as progressives and vice versa. I, I, you know, there's a lot of stuff going back and forth. I think I can speak to that a little bit, Dave. Yeah. yeah. So um, I also um, what I so I am on the left side of the Democratic Party. I'm in the Warren Bernie Sanders camp, but I always support just like you and progressive organizations, I always support at the end of the day whoever our nominee is, and there's no doubt that 
any moderate Democrat is way better, leaps and bounds better than yeah. our Republican opposition. And so yeah. I'm happy that you highlighted that. And so I was during that Democratic primary personally very torn between Senator Warren and Senator Sanders. I ended up supporting, I, I'm a feminist. I really appreciate a lot of Senator Warren's work around mm -hmm. feminist issues and highlighting things like pregnancy discrimination and going to bat for child care. These are universal child care. These are really important issues. And um, but Senator Sanders is a feminist too. Um, yeah. He is a white yeah. old man <laughs> who, like that, yeah. who absolutely goes to bat um, for everybody. And, and so I applaud him for being a role model to show just because yeah. you don't personally experience something doesn't mean that you can't have empathy and be an advocate. I ended up voting for Senator Sanders um, in the Democratic primary, I am a big believer in mm. free, universal health care. I believe as a feminist, you cannot have things like good reproductive health care if you don't have access to health care in general. Yeah. And so um, yeah. because of Bernie's long-term commitment to that, I did end up voting for him in the Democratic. I would have put you on war yeah. <laughs> I did. and I would, I would have totally understood. I, I spent a lot of time with uh, Warren's people uh, when the primary was going on. and. Um, you know, so that was funny too because uh, you yeah. know the, the, some of the Bernie crats were just you know not Warren people, and some of the Warren people were like, oh, they did not think much of Bernie. I thought that was odd, but they were so closely aligned. There's, they um, were. And they were wonderful people. Everybody I met um, was passionate on that side. Everyone was intelligent and articulate, and was really, re they really believed in their cause. They really did a great job. Um, so I wouldn't. I, I, to your point, I, I would absolutely vote for the nominee. Um, the protest yeah. votes, please, people, please, you folks at home. <laughs> you know, there, there, there might be a time for that, but not not when the the alternative is for the, for the Democrats to crash into. You know, Trump was pretty pretty difficult for four years. Imagine. Trump was Trump is fascistic, and um, yep. Biden, as you have pointed out, um, it's like a night and day difference between um, him and President Trump, and so I. Um, as, right after the primary was over and my candidate didn't win, I got right on board the Biden train and I dropped off literature. I yep. spoke yep. Um, at uh, on a panel with the president of Planned Parenthood to bring attention to how the Biden plan would help uplift reproductive health care in the United States. Mm -hmm. And so it's... Um, and I went to visibilities on the lawn in Keene. And so um, I refuse to choose between being a progressive and being a Democrat. I am both. And um, it's yeah, and, and, and voting against wrong is as important as voting for the right candidate. V voting against what you know is going to be really bad for people. And we need to show up if we want to influence. And we have, yeah. and, and even when we lose elections, we, um, it, like, even when the pro progressive candidate, for example, Bernie Sanders or Senator Warren, when they don't win, just by them running in that primary, they push the Democratic Party to the left. Oh, and yeah. so do activists and social movements yeah. when we're vocal. It makes a difference. And so yes. um, we want to applaud, um, like Biden just, you know, when he recently talked about um, his commitment to paid family <clears throat> leave. Um, that's an issue that I have cared about for years. Um, and so I want to thank him for supporting that. And I also want to thank all the social movement activists um, who Absolutely. for years um, have been pushing to bring that to the forefront. Um, your voices matter. Your activism matters. Yep. Being so, seen, being heard, every like, every share, you know, as much as you can. Absolutely. So, and so there is, um, so we, so I, I feel optimistic 
um, about the future. I believe that the Democratic Party, um, we, we've seen people like AOC and Cori Bush and mm -hmm. Senator Sanders, you know, push this party to the left. And it it's we are making progress and we need to continue um, to have social movement activists and democratic politicians work together so we can bring about change that people can actually feel like now like it's wonder like it's wonderful um, to talk about it but we need to keep pushing and pushing until like these, yeah. Until we feel a different, uh, until people are feeling a quality difference in their lives, so we don't want to give up. Um, so it's great that we won on a national level that we have in New Hampshire um, a Democratic delegation um, in Washington, and we also need to win in New Hampshire. We need to not need to let, uh, because on, um, yeah. it's it's not enough to have the national delegation. We need to be winning local elections. And so, because what I'm witnessing at the state house, we just had put forth a budget that gives tax breaks, you know, to corporations yeah. and people that do not just need it. Just don't need the money. And, you know, um, while turning our <laughs> pockets inside out and saying we don't have enough for schools and you know we can't pay a wage and just I mean I guess that doesn't really affect the tax base as as much but um, yeah it, it, like the shame on us we're always crying broke and we're giving money to these corporations who you know again uh, um, uh, socialism uh, only uh, socialism for well, what do they say with the um, we're cleaning up all the messes. The, the, the Socialism for the, the rich, I think, is what you were going to say, and rugged well, individualism for the yeah, yeah, yeah. Capitalism, <laughs> for capitalism where the profit is, and socialism when it comes to cleaning up all the, the mess that they leave behind. You know, the socialism is the policing, um, and the, the social services people, and the, the people who clean up toxic waste sites. And, oh, we can spread that amongst the people, you know, let the people pick up the costs there. Um, but focusing those profits towards the, the, the haves, it, it makes very little sense. We need um, to both be, in my opinion, um, taxing corporations appropriately and using that money for social services. And we need to, true. as a society, and I believe this for a long time as a college mm -hmm. student, I was out protesting the war in Iraq. Like, um, we Good need luck. to be moving from spending so much money on militarization and criminalization to investing in social services and prevention. We're going to spend money. Like, there's no doubt about it. Like, governments spend That's money. Our government do. has always spent money. But what do we want to put that towards? Do we want to put it towards health care? Do we want to put it towards education? Again, priorities. Like what? I, I get no value out of a new missile silo. I really, really believe I So don't. those are like, those are, um, those need to be the priorities and we just need to keep talking about it and bringing attention to it and I know that if we don't let up, we have already made progress. We defeated the Trump administration. We can continue we to build on up. that. Exactly. And no time to rest. <laughs> yeah. No time to rest. And move, move even further um, in a direction that's going to serve everybody, not just a few. Not just Great points. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, can we take a quick break and then uh, we'll come back and talk about some more things? I know there's a lot to yeah. get to and uh, we don't want to run out of time here. So, uh, you folks out there, stick around. We'll be back in just a few minutes uh, with Amanda Elizabeth Toll. And we're back, friends. Uh, I'm here in the studio with Amanda Elizabeth Toll, uh, our newly elected state rep, and we're going to continue the conversation we were just having, uh, or some of it. There were a few <laughs> points we wanted to get to, right? Um, yes. Uh, before we close, and um, I guess one of the things was, uh, can we just leap right into Keen Democrats and what's going on locally? Sure, yes. Yeah. So I'm very excited um, that um, we have a newly elected um, Keen Democrats. There are not myself included. Myself included. I'm I'm a vice um, um, chair of that, and uh, I. Um, 
there's 19 of us and we're a, we're a big group who have done, have a lot of different passions and have long histories of activism. You can learn more about us at the Keen Democrats website. And we, we are committed to having a really big tent party and being inclusive towards everyone and hearing the voices of everyone yep. and also forming great relationships with progressive social movement organizations across the state so that we, as we've talked about throughout this conversation, we can make more effective change when we work together, um, when Democrats and organizations and activists are working together towards common goals. And so this has been really exciting for me to see um, taking um, democratic politics in Keene to a new level um, of engagement and activism. And we just were running some really amazing events. Um, we had a, for, first of all, we had a historical caucus. We had more people show up oh, to yeah. the Keene Democrats election then the More history than the Zoom room could hold. We had a little, little uh, technical <laughs> yes. trouble there. So, um, so that was pretty exciting, and there were so many young folks in attendance, which really warmed my heart. Mm. And now we have we just had like on Monday night an amazing immigrant justice event with live music and we had that was great I, I was there <laughs> you yeah, were there yeah. yes um that's right you were and I'm i so remember sebastian puentes uh, talking about him going to a democratic uh, event and being the youngest person in the room and yeah exactly we really need to get the the youth engaged and and they're getting engaged they are standing up and yeah. taking a cause and taking a stand and that's Huge. It's so huge, and so um, we're and like so we're so grateful to be um, working with them. And we had representative as Maria Perez, and we had Sib, who's also the chair of the Latino uh, yeah. um, the caucus, and we had Sebastian Fuentes, who's the vice chair, uh, and has done a long a lot of activism with many organizations, but especially rights and democracy. And we had Sue Hay from Project Home. Yep. And it she was does one- great work. I just, just can't say enough nice things about uh, what she's doing. And, and Absolutely. The like, selflessness of, of just, you know, to, like an advocate, like, like you are for, for uh, your groups. I mean, just sticking up for the people who need the help. And um, I, I, she's, she's wonderful. I, that's. A Absolutely, project. the the work that Project Home is doing in our community um, to support um, refugees, asylum seekers, it's incredible, and yeah. um, to highlight um, their their um, struggles and how it's on all of us to make sure that people feel like they belong and that they're safe. And so I cannot say enough good things about um, the work that Project Home is doing here yeah. in our community. So that was wonderful because we're organizing, we're active, and at the same time we know in order to sustain us, we need to organize with joy and relationships and feel that we are in community and have one another's backs. And so that's, we are not just looking to get people out to vote every four years. We're looking to build community year round. The whole process. Yes, yeah. regardless of whether or not there's an election coming right up. And building community is a ethical, upstanding cause in and of itself. Yes. But it will also help us win elections. It's an imperative. Um, it really, <laughs> we, we have to stop thinking about the the politicians and the rulers and the people who you know run the machines because we're all in it together. And yeah, super important. So that and we have some listening circles coming up. So please go to the Keen Dems website. We want to hear from you about how we can help, what you think this community needs. And so we're having listening circles um, for e each of the five wards in Keene. So please go to the website and sign up. Um, 
and we're just so excited um, to welcome you into um, this local first movement yeah. that we're building. Um, and that's going, <laughs> going really well. They're, they're doing a lot of work to get these listening circles going. Um, uh, the website for those uh, folks uh, enjoying this at home, uh, it's keendemocrats.org, and that's where you can find information about the listening circles um, and links to sign up for those. And I, I would recommend that people do that. Um, it's about ways to get involved in your community which is kind of where we were headed next, is um, what, what, you know, yeah. what words do you have for folks out there who are looking to do something but they don't know what to do or, or how much to do or whether, you know, whether that little part is going to be important or you know, how do people get yeah. involved? Uh, what, do, what do you say? So, yeah, I'll, I'll, definitely, I'll, I'll end by talking about ways people can be involved and then, um, please, and then, um, so, and then I want to encourage folks to stay in touch um, with me, like if, if if you want to, please reach out. Like I have um, a Facebook page where I frequently write like political updates about what's going on in the state house, and um, I'm on Twitter, and my campaign website is still up. So um, I'm so humbled and grateful to be your state rep, and uh, I am here to serve. So please feel free to reach out and use me as a resource. And ways that you can get involved are plentiful. And any activism is better than no activism. Yep. So feel yep. good about what you can do. So some things that you can do are, um, for in terms of the, let's talk both inside the state house, and we'll talk about progressive social movement stuff too, because they're both important. For work inside the state house, every bill has a hearing on it. So you can sign up through um, the general court website to yeah. sign in in favor, in support of legislation that you think is good. And you also can sign in in opposition to legislation that is bad. And so I encourage you to sign in to hearings on pieces of legislation. If you want to, you can also sign up to testify at these hearings, which I go to as many hearings as I possibly can. Um, so for example, if there is a bad anti-choice bill, I have signed in before in opposition, and then I've gone and I've actually shared my abortion story with the committee to try to move them to understand how this piece of legislation impacts people's lives. Um, and so yeah. if you have a story that relates to one of these pieces of legislation, you can go and you can share it, or you can give statistics and facts um, in support of whatever your position is, or you can blend the two. And so there's so many ways to participate, but that's a really good one, um, is to sign in for or against. And then if you'd like, on top of that, give spoken or written testimony. Wouldn't that be powerful? Uh, yeah. Yes. So that's a great way to get involved with the um, New Hampshire legislature. And then we have so many great organizations across this state doing good work. And so I encourage you to find an organization that speaks to the issues that you care about and get involved with them. And so I am, I follow um, and am involved with Rights and Democracy, Planned Parenthood, the New Hampshire Reproductive Freedom Fund, the New Hampshire Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence, um, the New Hampshire Youth Movement. There's so many and yeah. so organizations that speak to me. And so it's wonderful to follow them on things like Facebook and Twitter because they give frequently things like legislative updates or they endorse candidates that speak to yeah. your passions and interests. So find some organizations that speak to you and follow them along with following the Democratic Party and your local representatives. Um, I, so you want to do, so there, stay engaged in Dem politics, stay engaged in social movement politics, and whenever there's an bring opportunity, let's bring those together. Yeah, so exactly. um, that's my um, 
for today. And that's what I'll say about getting involved. And please come and get involved with the, the Keene Democrats. Um, we, we are bridging that gap, and um, we want you to be a part of it wherever you're at on your political journey. You're welcome. Thank you and so that's, much, that's Dave. That's so important. Yeah. Yes, it, it is bringing us together and, and uh, the inclusivity and, and trying not to pick a side and pick on the other side uh, as much. I think all of these groups, uh, I see them joining each other's causes. I, I see yeah. people supporting each other when they come to speak, and it's, it's important. And you know, we might not agree on everything. Uh, we certainly don't agree on everything all the time. But um, a big tent, like you said, bringing Definitely. people on board and, and keeping an open mind uh, when we're talking about the other side, too. Uh, the red team, there's some good people there. Um, you know, the, the Republican, I, used, I started out a Republican. Like, I understand some conservative values. <laughs> I would have never guessed that, but yeah. <laughs> Way a long time ago, but I did. I, you know, they were yeah. saying, small government, keep the government off my back, uh, mm -hmm. fiscal responsibility, and I was like, hey, I'm in. That, that, that sounds good to me. Uh, and then I, you know, over the years, I observed pretty much the opposite of that happening. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but there are people who started there who just can't extricate themselves to come stand on the, on the green team or on the blue team. Definitely. And, uh, and we're we not going to bring people over to our cause by treating them poorly. Like, so try, if you can, to have com deep conversations with people. Um, this, I don't, like, I know we were going to wrap up, but I just have to see, like, Dave and I were actually at um, an event on the lawn for the a Democratic Visibility event, and there was a woman for Trump there, um, and Dave and another Democrat that were there, like, nicely, you know, gave me the courage to go and speak with um, her, and um, she she herself was an anti-abortion activist and I ended up sharing her with my story and I had a good conversation with her and she actually ended up voting for me. <laughs> so like, oh, um, nice. I have, that's what she wow. told, um, um, my, um, my friend who was there with us that day, um, Tim. So, um, she, so you just like, it would have, it's worth building relationships don't go into it thinking about the end result. Like, um, I would have talked to her even if she didn't end up voting for me, but understand that we need to win hearts and minds. Um, and if we're too, that doesn't mean that we don't hold politicians accountable. Yes, we need to hold mm. politicians accountable. If a politician is yeah. doing something like not supporting raising the wage, which is something that's going to impact so many Everybody. granite staters, um, like we need to push them in that direction. We can, so um, we can both support all Democratic candidates and also speak up um, when something is not in line with our values. You can do both. Um, you can do it in a principled way. And you can have conversations with people who don't feel the same way as you in a meaningful yeah. way and over the long term that's going to bring people in when we're warm when we're loving when we're compassionate when we exhibit empathy so part mm -hmm. of being a progressive is not just where you stand on the issues like and i'm going to stand firm on the issues um and i'm going to stand firm in endorsing the more progressive candidates but that doesn't mean when it comes to interpersonal relations, we can't strive to have good relations with everybody. We should. And to be and, respectful of and one to another be respectful. and include them in the conversation. And include them in the conversation as much as we can, Dave. You nailed yep. it. And I think that's I a really good, that's probably a good note to that's wrap the, up on is it. that we're in this together. Um, let's work together to bring a, there's, we're facing so many challenges. We have a climate crisis. We have, we have um, systematic racism and sexism in yeah. this country. Um, we have people that don't have access to their most basic needs being that like health care or, or just making enough money that they can pay their bills. And so we need to stay focused 
and we need to work together to bring about the change that's going to benefit the majority of folks. So thank you we so much do. for having me, Dave. Oh, thanks for coming on. And we'll have to do it again uh, real soon. Yes, definitely. I love coming. Um, I love this. Is, this is not the first time I've been interviewed you. I always enjoy being um, chatting with you. So whether it's in an interview or at um, an event, so I'll come back soon. Well, I was going to say, let's make it a regular <laughs> thing anytime. Yeah. So thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah. Thanks so much, and we'll catch you next time on November and Beyond.